All right, three, two, one. Hi, this is William Ramsey. Welcome to William Ramsey Investigates on tonight's show. I have a returning guest, Roberta Glass. We spoke about two other things this month. It's been a very busy month. Uh, Keith Ranieri's kind of uh, legal stunt to try to elicit sympathy for his predicament. And I think he will be sentenced next week, I think Tuesday or Wednesday. And we also talked about Mark Furman's uh, terrible West Memphis 3 documentary. <laughs> I couldn't call it a documentary. It's something else, but uh, <laughs> attempted understanding. Well, he got it all wrong. So anyway, we talked about it. But today we're going to talk about something that happened uh, just two days ago, the release of this um, deposition of Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, it was released October 22nd. And um, the deposition took place, uh, I think it was back in 2016, April 22nd, 2016, it was an all-day affair. From 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. was when it ended up through multiple breaks. But uh, attending it were, and this was in the case of uh, Jufre versus Maxwell. Uh, there were three attorneys there, Sigrid McCauley, Brad Edwards, who was also involved in Florida. I think Sigrid's also from Florida, but also Paul Cassell. And I have the uh, response of Paul Cassell to some of the litigation that took place Earlier on my website, if people want to see it, it's very interesting uh, insights into Mr. Dershowitz and Cernovich. But, uh, so they were attending. I, Brad Edwards and Paul Cassell never said anything, but they seemed to be in the, the, the uh, deposition room that took place in New York, New York, at the offices of Boyd Schiller, 575 Lexington Avenue. And for Maxwell was Jeffrey Pagliuca and Laura Menninger. Uh, her attorneys are from... Uh, Colorado for some strange reason. Uh, there was video. There was a videographer there. I haven't seen the video yet, but uh, it's an important. I think it's an important document about Maxwell because when she was arrested in the indictment, there were two counts, two of the more recent counts that were based upon this deposition. Uh, she had two perjury counts, and uh, I think it's very important to understand because these are probably the counts that will be will stick as opposed to the other four which were events that took place decades ago so this is a very recent uh deposition so i'm delighted to have roberta's read it i've read it so uh roberta are you there sorry for the long intro yes no it's it's important to put it in context you know yeah so i think i'm waiting so long for this for this to be unsealed yes and um so when it was finally unsealed, I, I think everybody rushed to read it. And in some ways, it's a big nothing burger <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in that Maxwell just lie, thinks she's going to lie her way out of it. I, I, you know, every question, she's, she said she's never seen underage people. She, bar she barely remembers Virginia Roberts Dufre. She, you know, I mean, it goes right. on and on and on. Yeah, no, she just de deflected all the time, and uh, she couldn't remember. She was never with, and it's I've read Virginia Dufresne's autobiography, which is or her biography, which is in the Maxwell court record, and there there's two totally different narratives because also Dufresne says like, oh, I was never at that house. I was there like once a year. Where, uh, you know, she according to Dufresne that. Uh, Maxwell's an essential part of everything. She was always around Jeffrey and all this stuff. So I found that to be uh, a pretty, uh, pretty interesting contrast. And it's 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 a very interesting. I mean, most people don't want to be deposed because of this. Because of this, you can't lie. So she's in this position. She can't. She she can lie, and hope that she won't be charged with perjury. That didn't work out too well. True. She can lie and hope that the flight records, her emails, all the other records and all the testimony of everyone else that contradicts what she's going to say, hope that she doesn't get in trouble in that way. Or what could she have done? Could she have, uh, some of the questions she's instructed not to answer by her attorney and she doesn't. Uh, but when you're guilty, it's not a good idea to be deposed. <laughs> right. And I found that interesting because at the very end of the deposition, they're asking her about uh, her avoidance of an earlier deposition involving Edwards. 
Did you note that part? Yes, so it's like she's that pretty, was a yeah. fabulous part. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a nothing burger in that I think people thought that there would be all sorts of names dropped. They're all redacted. But I think it's a, a really important read to understand. Uh, you know, she talks about, just for one second, she talks about, um, I'm, I'm not interested in Jeffrey Epstein. This is all about Jeffrey Epstein. I'm not in it. Right. And then she says at one, another point, um, I'm not interested in what happens to Jeffrey Epstein. I'm only interested in what happens to myself. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I wrote down the exact quote. But that will give you an idea of what kind of person she she is. But she says she she wasn't avoiding, to go back to your question, she wasn't avoiding the original deposition. It was just that her mother was ill. Right. And then she blames it on, uh, there, there's a confusion between another deposition and how horrible Bradley Edwards is and blah, blah, blah. But then they say, well, you went to what appears to be Chelsea Clinton's wedding right. two weeks later. So your mom was well enough for you to fly to Chelsea Clinton's wedding, but you didn't want to be deposed then. Right. And I think it was, it was back in New York too. So she flew back right. to New York. Yeah. So that was uh, very interesting. But uh, yeah, and she forgot everything. She conveniently forgot the whole story of her meeting um, Virginia Roberts, according to Virginia Roberts, she was at Trump's Mar-a-Lago. And then, you know, so she just like, no, I don't even know. I just remember her mom. I remember talking to her mom outside. I don't even know what happened inside. You know, she just deflected that. And Virginia Roberts, your phrase says that her father brought her. And I read her father's deposition where he said he brought her. So I don't, I don't know what, what we're talking. I, I, and then she says, I know that Virginia Roberts Euphre is a liar and, he, and she didn't have sex with Epstein while she was up giving him a massage, but she said she was outside talking to Euphre's mother. So how does she know what went on in that room? Right. How can she say? And then there's the other problem where she says, I, I know that Virginia Roberts Euphre is a terrible person, right. but then she also says she hardly knows her. Right, so a good point. Do you know her or is she a terrible yeah. person? Yeah, Which she's an that? awful fantasist. So that's what the whole lawsuit was about, is that she called Jufre a liar. So that was it. So she was supposed to lie. So she just kept calling her a liar all throughout this nine-hour de deposition. Oh, no, she's an awful fantasist. She's a terrible person. And they had to be, they had to say, the lawyer had to say, uh, Virginia's lawyer, we're not talking about Virginia. They had to stop her. Uh, because at every turn, she wanted to talk about what a horrible liar Virginia Jufre was. And I think that gives you some insight into her mindset that she thought that with her class and her privilege she could just come in there and say look I'm a, a wonderful part of the elite society and this troubled fantasist is accusing me of terrible things right that's enough true my position of society is enough yeah I mean and she's like she uses like the British terms like whilst and rubbish so she's kind of, I kind of get this kind of flippant attitude from her. Uh, but yeah, here's another line for her. Uh, another one of Virginia's many fictitious lies and stories to make this a salacious event to get interest in press. It's absolute rubbish. But I don't think it really had that much press back in 2016. Maybe I was wrong, but. You know what's really funny, though, is her description of her job for Epstein. Right. Which is now is she into building houses? She's hiring architects. She's hiring uh, interior designers, and, and what what is she in construction now? What <laughs> you know? What what kind of job is that? But then she's only making. She's very unclear of the salary. It's under five hundred thousand k, but it's more than a hundred k. And then she doesn't remember the gifts that Epstein got her, including a car. I mean. Do you, right. I, I pretty much remember every gift I've ever gotten in my life. Yeah, Very she could. She couldn't remember how much she paid for her house too, which is like super important. Like <laughs> you can't remember that. Like what? So she like had it. Her memory was very selective. But yeah, right. yeah. But she's. Don't give me yeah. a car. I'm gonna remember it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I mean, there was always this issue of how old Virginia Roberts was at the time, and you know, whether it was 17 or 15. So they keep asking that. And also Macaulay keeps asking, like, did you ever see anybody under 18? And she just dodges it. She just keeps dodging that question. 
Oh, and you know, there's also very interesting sensitivities to words. And from the beginning, she says, I don't understand. She's asked originally if she recruited any females under the age of 18. And she goes, I don't know what you mean by female. I'm a 54 year old woman. So the, uh, the word female triggers her, the word, uh, minor, you know, there's all these words that, uh, trigger her. The word recruit triggers her. I never recruited. I don't know what you mean. I was hiring architects. Again, I right. was architect. I had an official uh, position. <laughs> hiring people. I had an official position, but I don't know what my salary was. Uh, it, it should be mocked in some ways. Uh, but there's also uh, some very interesting stuff with her putting out lies about Virginia Giuffre in the press that I thought was fat. Yeah. That was remember that part? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was kind of at the end was uh, they kept asking him. I mean, it was interesting, too, because they had during Discovery... They'd obtained emails between her and Epstein in 2015 talking about Jufre. So it was fairly recent that she was clearly involved in Je- Jeff uh, talking to Epstein, but she was just trying to avoid anything connecting her to him. You know, I was never at those houses. I was very, I was there once a year. Do you remember that part? But yeah. Right. I was hardly involved ever. I don't remember who I, uh, I, I flow all the time. But, oh, remember when she said she doesn't know if GM in the flight logs is herself? Right. And she yeah. can't think of another GM that would be flying. flying. Right. No, I did. Jeffrey Epstein so no. often. Yeah. And, no, but uh, where was that? I'm trying to find the part in my notes where she was talking about the press. Like, she was trying to. Well, in the Daily Mail in 2011, she tried to float out a story that Virginia Giuffre cried rape. And that the police didn't even investigate it because she was so uh, found not credible. Um, And then there's another thing where they're talking about the Guardian article. And Epstein says, um, it will end. Here's art from our friends from the uh, Guardian article. It will end. Um, And that was, this will, this will now end, he wrote. Right, and for people who don't know, they've cracked a number of the names. So somebody, they actually made a mistake when they put this whole thing out because the deposition has uh, an index at the end, and you can tell who some of these people are. Robert Gow was who they were in talking to in the UK, seems to be a contact or an influential person. But also Alfredo Rodriguez is mentioned in the Black Book. So there is an article for if people who are interested. A lot of the names have been cracked, not all of them. Mm-hmm. But yeah. There's a lot of interesting facts in this, I think. Well, there's another part where she's uh, really hostile. They ask her what uh, country she's citizen, a citizen of it. And she says, yeah. I'm a citizen of Terramar, which is yeah. her <laughs> nonprofit environmental group. It was right. very odd. Yeah, that was odd. Um, but they, she had some kind of moment, too, where they kept asking her questions. She pounded on the table, right? Mm -hmm. And then they stopped it. But one of the interesting aspects of that was that she, after that outburst happened, before they called a break, she said, I never, I never threatened anybody. Do you remember that part? (laughs) Yes. So she blatantly says she never, and they never asked her anything about that in the deposition yet, because they didn't get to the parts where she supposedly threatened somebody. So it was. So she had an outburst. Said, "I didn't threaten anybody, right? I want the record to know." She kind of was interjecting. She was trying to take over from the attorney, uh, Macaulay, and Sigrid Macaulay wasn't having it. But she was definitely trying to interject certain things, and that was one of the things that she said that I thought that was, happened multiple times, where she said, yeah. "Your questions aren't good. Right? You're not. You know, I'm asking the questions. You know. Right. And she has like you know control issues." I, I, I said, no, you know, don't worry. I'm, and then the lawyer says, don't worry, I'm paying attention. And she says, I object. And she says, what do you want to, you're, what are you turning into a lawyer now? Right. And then she said, I wouldn't mind being a lawyer. I think she said something like that in that. Right. And she, yeah, yeah here's another good one she said about Virginia Roberts. On what I know is a liar. She's a liar, an exaggerator, a fantasist, and an absolutely, truly terrible person. <laughs> so that was another... Another one. But yeah, it was very interesting. So they did ask her about her threatening people. And I actually wrote down in my notes about how many times they asked this one question. Uh, I think they asked it like 
literally 12 times. They asked it over and over and over again. And let me find that. It's incredible. I had a lot of notes of that in this. Um, and they kept asking her, did you ever, you know, did you, one of the other things that was interesting is they asked, did you know how Jeffrey Epstein made his money? And she answered, no, she had no idea. And she would have known him from 1992 to that date, 2016. 91. Yeah. 91. 91. Yeah. She's right. She said she started working for him in 92. And they asked if, if, if Jeffrey Epstein works for the government or the Mossad. Right. And she answered, she can't recall if he ever told her that. So I would say that's yes and yes on both of those. Yeah, points. she said, does Jeffrey Epstein any relationship with the U.S. government for the CIA or the FBI in his lifetime? And then she asked, Jeffrey Epstein have an affiliation with the Israeli government? Mm -hmm. and, right. uh, and did you direct him to leak press to the press criminal allegations about Vir Virginia Roberts? I already testified that I have no knowledge of uh, what you were asking me. Yeah, that was one. I'm trying to find this this one part of my notes, but it was like they asked her this, I mean, 11 times, that was it. Are you aware of any interstate or international transportation of a woman aged 18 or 28 for the purposes of prostitution? And they asked her that 11 times. She just kept deflecting and BSing and all that stuff. And she didn't. She also didn't know that Jeffrey Epstein was in, did jail time for procuring a minor for prostitution she just knew he was in jail she said I mean, this is just it, it just she went up in front of a jury and did this rap they would just hate her yeah hate right, her right. and this then she not fly yeah then she tried to deflect the whole picture of her prince andrew and jufre in her london flat and just bs oh. her whole way through it <laughs> Well, and they talk about an outfit at Burberry that she bought for Virginia. Am I, was I understanding that right? No, that's right. And she so, says, yeah. and she says well, handbag. that outfit is so poorly put together. I have no recollection of going to Burberry with Virginia Jufre. And the outfit is so poorly put together. I can't imagine me sort of or poor looking or I don't know, whatever she said. I'm paraphrasing. But I can't imagine me buying it. Or something like that. Right. It yeah, reminded right. me of the OJ, I would never wear those ugly ass shoes comment. And then they, you know, bring out the picture of OJ wearing the Bruno Mali shoes. Right. <laughs> it's the liar's right. argument. Right. And they were, they did actually bring a lot of exhibits into, which I haven't seen yet, but there were clearly a lot of things they were referencing in the deposition that I don't know if would that, that was released, the pictures that they were referencing. But there was definitely, I would like to see the exhibits to this deposition. But uh, Me too. she said in her response, um, what I'm re representing is that her entire ludicrous and absurd story of what took place in my house is an obvious lie. So, I mean, it's just unbelievable. She just really, I mean, she just really deflected everything. And, so. and here's my other question about this. So, if... You know, the thing that really sunk Maxwell in this is that there were uh, the police reports for from 30 girls who had been abused by Jeffrey Epstein. Right. And they brought those out. And that supported Virginia's story. So if, say, if, if, if that didn't exist, if these women had never come forward, these women or girls, I'm not sure how old they were when they came forward, if that didn't exist, would Maxwell and Epstein be were be able to get away with this? You know what I mean? If it was just right. uh, Virginia Dupre's word against Maxwell. Right. Good point. No, I think, I don't know. I don't know if that would work, but I think that that's probably the basis of the two perjury claims is that they probably had testimony from multiple, multiple girls or women that, you know, these things are, there were sex toys and sexual activity and you know, I yeah, mean, the question, she trolls, yeah. she, she trolls she, a yeah. bit with the sex toy stuff. I don't know what you mean. Can you describe sex toys just to embarrass the lawyer? Right. Yeah, thought, she said, right? yeah, so true. Like she played dumb all this stuff. I have no idea what you're talking about. She would keep saying. And she was buying time a lot. I, I don't understand the question. Right. Yes. He went to Oxford. I think, yeah, I think you 
<laughs> English is your native language. But no. I love when she suggests yeah. that uh, GM could be Georgina or <laughs> George. <laughs> Someone else. Some other GM flying all the time with Epstein. Well, I'm glad that you said that because she did say something really snobby to her. It was, I'm English, so you could have some difficulty understanding the way I communicate. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that one? Yes, oh, I do. Man, yeah. I've really encouraged people to read this. Yeah. I, you know, it, maybe it's not, I think people are disappointed that we can't figure out all the names yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've, I, I think, I think, I think people will start putting things together a little bit more, but still, I mean, this will really give you an idea of who, uh, who we're dealing with, who these people are. I really think that's a good point. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. Very dark. To I mean, just, just a blizzard of lies, deception, evasions, all kinds of stuff, exaggerations. Uh, I mean, the fact that she could avoid, like, all the quiet, like, I don't even know what Jeffrey was up to. I don't know how he made his money. They should have asked her how she made her money. They may not have known at the time that she had tons of cash in the bank, in multiple banks. But uh, they also tried to pin down on her the black book, the notorious black book by Rodriguez, because Rodriguez said he got it off of her computer, right? And so, mm -hmm. I don't believe this. This is obviously what I know. She says, I can only testify to what I know, obviously, and I believe that this is a copy of a stolen doc document. I would love to know how you guys got it. I mean, and then Not she, that it's untrue, but that it's stolen. Right. You're point. the real criminals. It's just deflection. You're the real criminal for, for bringing up this stolen document. Right. And she, I, she had threatened, supposedly threatened Rodriguez. So they asked her, this is after her outburst burst that she said, I never threatened anybody. She's, they ask her, did you ever tell Rodriguez that he better watch out and keep his mouth shut with respect to what occurred at Mr. Epstein's home? She, she, did, she said she didn't know that. Uh, she didn't remember? Yeah, she, she didn't, didn't remember. And then they cast her, do you have, have you ever directed anyone to call any witnesses relevant to this case and threaten them not to testify? Uh -huh. so, yeah, that was interesting. Um, and then they like, tried to get her, tried to get Roberts on some kind of grand theft. Do you remember that part? Yes. Yeah. So it says, you presumably draw attention to the fact that prior to filing her suit against Mr. Epstein, Miss Roberts fled the U.S. to avoid being arrested for grand theft. What grand theft were we referring to there that Virginia Roberts committed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she kind of. She, I mean, it's so like it was a long time ago. I don't remember, but she had something from 2011, which is not that long ago from 2016. She couldn't remember that either. No, yeah, terrible, you know, terrible. So, what do, from this deposition, do you think she's going to go to trial or is she going to make a deal? I think that, uh, I think she'll try to make a deal. I think she'll just accept the fact that she has to do time. I don't think she could go to trial. Imagine her pulling these stunts in, on in front of a jury. I just don't think that it would it would be terrible. They would just think she was involved in more. I mean, if they find out more uh, information too during their inquiry, they could send an amended complaint with even more criminal stuff on it. So uh, there's probably tons of uh, damaging information yet to come out. I think. So I don't know what's going on. It's interesting though because the person who I think uh, was involved in filing this. Uh, Strauss is actually leaving that office again. So they've had Berman, and now Strauss is leaving. So something's going on, I think, in the oh, was it the Southern District of New York District uh, Federal Office? Yeah, but it's uh, really, it's really, it's too bad because yeah. it looks like you know these abuse cases. New York is making a name for them. So I don't know. Right. You don't want it. You don't want that office to be in disrepair uh yeah, especially with these very high profile cases i mean I, so i have the opposite reaction but maybe i'm just hopeful because i'm hoping for a trial but uh -huh. i i thought is she so arrogant that she would go in and she lied on her bail application she lied in this thing i think she still thinks she might get out of this and if she makes a deal is it going to be a claire brothman deal is she going to pay restitution and just and just well, she's already settled this case, right? She already settled with um, Jufre, so that's done. Right, yes, right. So that payment is done now. It's between her and the state. That's what I'm talking about. Right. So We're I don't know what the damages them. they would try to impose upon her. It'll be interesting. But if it's anything like the Jeffrey Epstein case where all these people came out of the woodwork to make a statement, something like that could be happening in this case where 
the government knows that they can prove perjury by just a, a mountain of evidence, right? Right. So they probably have other things on her. I mean, I don't know the totality of it, but I mean, this did. I mean, for me, this this deposition was terrible for her. I mean, especially coming out public, because people are pouring all over this thing trying to figure it out. Have you told me that Dershowitz is like, oh yeah, you can <laughs> uh, you can unredact my name from this? Probably because he knows that it, there was nothing really that uh, incriminating about him, right? Because he has nothing to hide, he right, says. Right, he's got nothing to None hide. None of these stunts work for Dershowitz. You know, I think the public's opinion has been made a, a long time ago. Mind has been made up a long time ago with Dershowitz. Guilty. Sorry, yeah. but he's not talking his way out of it. He's just, he looks so guilty. And, and so, you know, he, 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 you know, was part of getting the deal for Epstein in Florida. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's up to his, you can't say he's not involved, you know? True. True. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, they, what did uh, Macaulay asked her eight times? Do you believe Jeffrey Epstein sexually abused minors? He just kept, they kept, they had to keep asking because she just <laughs> evaded, you know? Yeah. Or had a, had an interest in minors too. That was another thing she evaded. Right. Was, Anything right? under 18 and viewed. Yeah. So, and, oh, but, and they asked her if she thought it was wrong and she wouldn't, if it was damaging. Remember that part? If, is it damaging to call a right. victim of sexual abuse a liar? Is it damaging to sexually abuse a minor? And any normal person would say yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, I noticed that. So they asked not in her case. She's not sure. She doesn't want to answer. Can't recall. I mean, right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It just makes you want to take a shower after you read it. And I, I was talking to my mom about it, and I said, you know, there are, where the whole country, all I'm talking about uh, just the citizens of this country, are outraged over this story. Yeah. Where is the outrage from politicians? How many more Jeffrey Epstein's are there? Good is question. This just regular fare. How many of these politicians were involved with Epstein, or, or you know, someone like him? Right. I mean, it's pretty incredible. I did just did a story on Nygaard, who was in the in the Caribbean and, and right. trafficking women, and you know, Epstein was connected to what's the guy out of new mexico and mitchell so you, you know don't know uh, who else is in that black book the black book has tons of names richardson so, yeah yeah mm -hmm. richardson right um yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> here's another so one you, I mean, don't you think i mean don't you think it would be good for some uh, someone's political career to say hey this has got to stop enough trafficking girls and i women. think so <laughs> but i would think so no more Jeffrey Epstein's, but nothing. Just, I can't believe the radio silence. I mean, what what's going on here? It's very strange. It's certain people do not, I mean, I would say the alternate media is all over Epstein, but the corporate media and all these known figures, barely, I mean, the story's done. We're done with Epstein. Let's move forward. Got other, other things to talk about. I mean, the same thing happened with Hunter Biden. That's a huge story. I mean, I don't even know what's on his computer, but... Um, them taking it's bribe. very scary the cens censorship of Facebook. Yeah, yeah. very scary, and, and and YouTube, and every and Twitter. I mean, I actually just uploaded um, a, a story about the murder of Vince, Vince, Vince Foster on Speaker, and they shut it down. I don't even know people couldn't download it. YouTube what? was yeah on Spreaker. They couldn't get through. It was the only time that's ever happened to me on whatever two hundred. 250 or 300 shows the only time that it just wasn't available people would try to download it through itunes and just not available and youtube brought up the little official wikipedia right, story right, so people suicide. can have a reference actual no. reference isn't that unbelievable that? they were on that within the hour of it being posted can you believe I, that I that, that little sub on jfk and other other topics yeah. other hot topics they do that with yeah oh, mm -hmm. yeah so the censorship is is incredible. I mean, I've had some of the guys, Derek Bros, actually, who was one of the first people I interviewed about Epstein before he was arrested. Bros had done like three documentaries on Epstein, but was in front of his house in Palm Beach. He just had his entire YouTube channel erased. So I don't know if he'll mm -hmm. ever get it back. But I mean, that's a, that's incredible because he was really one of the early guys 
was Bros. Uh, some reporting by uh, Opperman and one other guy, but not, not Pierce too Redman. Yeah. yeah, Pierce Redman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, scary, scary times. I mean, I'm I'm not invested in YouTube at all. I'm ex I expect my channel to go bye bye. And they actually did that in 2016. They did that to me. They shut down uh, both of my channel. I had a backup channel too. They shut them both down during the election, right around this time. And atheism is unstoppable is another one. That oh, channel's right. just gone. gone. I mean, there's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. And uh, when you're talking about, you know, true crime stuff, factual true crime stuff, there you go, gone. All right. No, <laughs> so. it's incredible. It's really incredible. And then they just can say something really Orwellian. Uh, it's community guidelines violated, done, and that's it. Oh, you but just you can put up as many factually inaccurate things on the West Memphis Three as you want, as Tons. long as that that narrative go yeah. go for it, right? I mean, there are, most of the people commenting on the West Memphis Three have it wrong or are intentionally obfuscating the facts. So, All right? I mean, yeah, these are strange days, man. Really strange. I, I think that all you have to kind of plan on eventually getting to some kind of alternate tech. I mean, I don't know. I don't know any other way around it. Right. I, it's, it's just a very, a very, very scary time. And I don't think people are getting it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I, as some of us are getting it, but I don't know if people are really getting how important a dialogue is from all different perspectives. Yeah. Just letting people talk. I mean, I don't do any swearing at all. I just try to get, look at the facts of these cases, you know, but I could be gone. I know. I've, one of the reasons I why I kind not. of yeah. One of the well, I hope not too. One of the reasons I went to podcast was try to um, avoid YouTube's constant gaming of the system and censorship and stuff like that. And now, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that the censorship impetus to censor people will now be on this other kind of newer media where they'll just try to you know curtail people from talking because some of these podcasts mm -hmm. are really that graphic. I mean, they're swearing, all kinds of stuff. So. It's kind of weird that those people are allowed, as long as you're not talking about dicey political stuff, uh, I guess it's okay. Right. And what do you think of the Netflix lawsuit against the cuties? The the state suit against Netflix? Yeah. I think that uh, they're in trouble. I think they're clearly in violation of uh, the law of like promoting child porn. Because I, I was even watching... Did you see the... <laughs> I just the watched guy? the trailer. I didn't even watch the movie. I watched the trailer. I'm like, do you guys see what I'm seeing? Because this is freaking, this is, this is child porn. I mean, it's it's exploiting underage kids. And I'm, I, I've, I've seen, I know people who, like some commentators on YouTube who actually watched the whole movie and they were in shock. Like it was bad. Like there was all <laughs> kinds of like. I mean, taboos, just like, just breaking taboos over and over again. I'm like, okay, well, I think one of them had this funny comment, like, I watched Cuties and now I'm on the FBI watch list. <laughs> or something right, like that. I, I know. And it just, there were some men who were like, I, it turned me on and it's a great film. I was like, wow, really? that's, Ooh. well, you're exposing yourself. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. No, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't really? even, I could tell you offline what I saw, but I would not even put it on the record. Just on the just on the trailer. Mm -hmm. Bad. So just, I think that I think that disturbing. I think that Netflix, the consequences of that are them just being like a pedo enabler of our terrible public relations situation for them. They just seem to take it pretty blithely, but I think that that's a it's a terrible look for them. Terrible optics promoting that. Yeah, and they've been pushing all sorts of stuff, as yeah, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Factually yeah. inaccurate stuff about yes. true crime. True. Uh, you know, trans and kids, all that stuff, you know. Well, yeah, what, what was that uh, Berlinger book, a Berlinger film they put out about that serial killer that people were like, why Ted are you? Bundy? Yeah, yeah. The Ted I mean, Bundy Ted thing. Bundy looked like, yeah, you like, know, Dreamboat. Yeah, weird. I mean, I wouldn't expect it from somebody else, but Berlinger, I'm not surprised. No. It seems actually, I mean, uh, making a killer look good is actually seems to be something associated with Bill Berlinger, if you know what's going on. Or hey. a sex, you know, a sexual predator like Tony Robbins. He did that whole love letter documentary to Tony Robbins, and Tony Robbins, we haven't heard anything about what's going on with his sexual 
right. harassment allegation. That just sort of disappeared into disappeared. thin air. Yeah. Strange days. Is there anything else about this uh, deposition that you'd like to add before we kind of wrap it up? I think I, th I think it's just very interesting, and it made me aware that you always have to wonder what's going on behind the scenes with these stories. Who's floating out stuff to which reporter? Who's keeping right. certain things out of article? Well, we know that Maxwell actually paid these two kind of like, uh, they are, I think they're called right-wing activists, but she paid them to do a story, if you remember that. I can't even remember their the names. Smear the yeah. victims, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we know that she was around that. Here's one thing that was interesting that I forgot to mention. She says, you don't, she's saying this to the other woman attorney who really, I thought, did a great job, Sigurd Macaulay. Quote, you don't ask me questions like that. First of all, you are trying to trap me. I will not be trapped. I totally resent and find it disgusting that you use the word recruit. I already told you I don't know what you're saying about that, and your implication is repulsive. So she knows that recruiting people is bad, but that's all people are talking about, that she was a recruiter, particularly of Virginia Roberts. That's what Virginia right. Roberts is saying. So. It's the area of sensitivity. I, it's funny. I wrote the same thing down. You're trying to trap me. Right. So it was an interesting part of the deposition, for sure. Yeah, no, it's definitely a worth worthwhile um, read. No question. Mm -hmm. How do you know GM is me? That's what she said, too. <laughs> so are you looking at this Paul flight log? It says J-E, GM, and Virginia. The GM you are saying is not you? Her response is... Uh, how do you know the GM is me? So, I don't know. It just kind of went on and on. On and on. And uh, oh, the whole thing is amazing. And, and yeah. it's not a hard read. I was expecting no. a lot harder read, you know. It's a no, long it's not read, a hard but it's not a hard read, you know. So I really encourage people to, yeah. to, to read it. Yeah, definitely. So, tell me about uh, what you're going to go do with uh, Keith Ranieri. When is it, Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday, Tuesday, the twenty so seventh. The sentencing. So they're um, just gonna if he gets sentenced to what? They're just gonna drag him off to jail, huh? Yeah, he's already in jail. Right, drag him so off to other place. Right? So so jail. I think they'll take him to jail until he gets assigned to prison, and then gotcha. ship him off there. But I think everybody's expecting him to get life in prison with this judge. I, I can't see with all the. I mean, he was found guilty on every charge. I can't imagine any lesser sentence for him. For him. What's the What's the sentencing? And a lot look? of victims are going to be speaking, oh, and um, so what? I'm sorry. What was your question? What What is his? What are the? What's the like sentencing parameters? Like, how many years is he possibly going to get? Oh gosh, I used to know this, but I think it's like some of them. Each count, has, some of them have twenty up to twenty-five something years. Wow. I think all together, you know, it, it's going to be life. Yeah, and he should be. He should be put away for forever. And the fact that he's doing these interviews with Frank Parlato, um, and right. for the Frank Report, if you've looked at it for the past week, has just been, um, you know, a. Uh, basically a platform for, for Nexium people and Keith Ranieri. Yeah, it's so strange, so. too, because I, oh, I interviewed Parlato before Ranieri got arrested. <laughs> so it's a, quite, quite the uh, turn by Parlato to now right. be willing to uh, he listen had to what Ranieri... a newsletter that goes out to people who subscribe to the Frank Report. That's like all the... You know, all the the, well, the judge is terrible that the judge didn't take into consideration that Michelle Hatchett and Nikki Klein wanted to testify and that they were threatened by the prosecutor. It's all nonsense. Keith Ranieri did not want to put on a defense. He chose not to. Nobody, he didn't testify in his own defense and he didn't ask anyone to testify for him. He thought the prosecution's case was so weak, he took a gamble, and it yeah. did not work for him. Yeah, Mr. 220IQ didn't uh, didn't quite assess that <laughs> correctly. <laughs> he was writing post-it notes like, you know, like a madman. You know, it was clear he was in charge of his own defense. He had the trial he wanted, and it didn't work out. Now he's crying that it was all an unfair trial. It's just the same narrative that you see in the wrongful conviction movement. We, we, do, we don't want Keith Ranieri necessarily to be freed. We just want him to have a fair trial. But you know that if he had another trial, 
and that he was convicted again on all these counts, that they would again call it unfair and, and, and have another beef with it. It's just, they, you know, it's really such a fake thing, this thing, that they didn't get a fair trial. It's just a way yeah. to It's just say, the, the standard response, right? The standard, right. oh, I didn't get a fair trial. I mean, they do, that usually pops right up the first thing on appeal, but those are often addressed and assessed. So I suspect he will appeal his sentence, I think. Oh, sure. As so, long as he can stay, he wants to be the center of attention as much as he can, and he also wants to get out of jail and prison. You know, he wants right. out. So do you think you'll be making a report about what you see on Tuesday, Tuesday night? Probably Wednesday. Probably, probably Wednesday. be out Wednesday. So people I'm taking a little bit more time now cool. and, and really thinking about what I want to say. But, yeah. So people can go to Roberta Glass True Crime Report. Tuesday, that would be the 27th, right? Right. So it will October be out Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So that'll be 28th, yeah. So 28th. people go check that out. Go look at this, see what goes goes on with Ranieri. I'll be interesting to see what his victims say if they get that time in court. Because I think that what the victim yeah. said about Epstein was incredible. I actually did my own show about that because the media never even addressed it. They just saw wow. took pictures of him outside, but they didn't really go through the totality of all the, the statements against Epstein. So, anyway. Roberta Glass, thank you so much for uh, your time again. We're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell's deposition from April 22nd, 2016, which is online all over the place if people want to read it. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay.